My next guest, quantum cognition researcher Lauren Fell, was in a simulation replicating her lunar mission at the Hawaii Space Exploration and Logan simulation when the mission failed. If she and her team had actually been on the moon, they would have died. Lauren joins us live now to explain how all this works. Lauren, we're very glad to see you alive and well. Tell us more <laughs> about this project. Start at the beginning for us. What did this simulation involve? Where did it all happen? Well, it was uh, on top of a volcano in Hawaii uh, and it was in an ana what's called an analogue lunar habitat. So it simulates as best it can uh, the conditions that you would have if you were living on the moon. Uh, and it really does feel like it. All around you is uh, like a, it's volcanic. So you can't really see any people all around you. So you really feel like you're, you're enclosed in this little dome that's protecting you. Uh, and essentially we lived day by day and towards the end of the mission, uh, there was a mistake that, that was made. We were att attempting to, to fix a, a heater. Um, and one of the, the people who were without a spacesuit inside the habitat, unfortunately, without thinking, um, opened our airlock, which would have exploded the whole habitat. Uh, so yes, we did die. We would have, we were in our suits, so we would have died a little slower than the people inside, um, mostly due to starvation and other things because the whole habitat would have exploded, but yes, not, not a good result. <laughs> no, gosh, what a fascinating experience. So how long did you do that for? And, and what sort of communication did you have? Was there any contact with anyone outside of that facility? It was very limited, which was one of the tougher uh, parts of the mission. So uh, we essentially had one opportunity to have a sort of um, communication. Other than that, it was really uh, asynchronous. So sending something out and, and getting something back. So that was really made you feel very isolated. So really all you could rely on for any kind of social uh, interaction was the, was your crew with the people uh, that you're in the habitat with. Um, and we did have uh, communication with mission control. So that was every evening we went through what happened during the day uh, and planned the next day. So that was, that was our main sort of connection with the outside world. So Laura, for you personally, how did you come to do this? What was the whole point of you being involved in it? Well, my background's in psychology. So I, I do a bit of uh, research and, and work in space now, but I came to the space industry through NASA's crowdsourcing challenges. So basically participating as, as a novice and, and sort of, uh, I was lucky enough to have some success in some of the engineering challenges that they put out. Uh, and from there, uh, I, I sort of connected my research, which is on trust and, and looking at alternate ways of, of modeling trust uh, and um, connecting that with, with what I've been doing in space. So really naturally that kind of came out as let's look at trust in these extreme uh, high consequence environments of space. Gosh, it does certainly look very remote. We're showing our viewers some, some pictures now. What was most surprising for you? What did you learn? What did you get out of this whole thing? Yeah, so in terms of the research, um, it was really interesting the... Uh, importance of self-trust. So I had sort of been looking at holistic trust in terms of how we trust the other crew members, how we trust um, the people back home, mission control, all the equipment. And so I was really sort of expecting that, that that would be the main focus. But something that came out that was really important was how we trust ourselves. And really at the beginning for a lot of us, it was that that seemed to be quite low because we're in this very new environment. It's very foreign. Uh, we're not sure what's going on. And then that kind of builds up and that affects how we trust other things. In some cases, it made us trust our whole experience more. In other cases, we maybe uh, second can guess things more because as we built our own trust in our own abilities. So that was a really interesting thing to find. So what next, Lauren? Would you like to take that simulation into more of a, a real life scenario? Yeah, well, well, some of the work that I that I did there was related to another project that I'm working on, which is to put plants on the moon. Uh, and firsthand, uh, some nice fresh lettuce leaves would have been amazing on there. It was the first thing I ate when I came out of the habitat was lettuce and, and a salad. Uh, and it really hit home the importance for me of, of being able to grow some fresh ingredients uh, when, when we do eventually come to habitat, habitat um, on the moon. So uh, 
essentially we're, we're going to do a project to put some plants uh, on the moon and grow them, just see if they survive the trip there and see if they can grow in 2026 uh, and onwards and upwards uh, towards our sustained human presence up there and working towards that and, and having some nice food for our future astronauts. Wouldn't that be nice? Lauren Fell, really appreciate you making the time and, and having a chat with us. Thanks so much. Thank you.